This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to move away from talking about bins and we're going to talk about getting in and actually doing some editing inside of Avid Media Composer. Now in this lesson we're going to cover some basic editing techniques, obviously if you're switching from another NLE that you're going to want to know or of course if you're new to Media Composer it's going to be essential to know these to get up and running as quickly as possible. What I also want to show you is how you can create some timeline views or timeline settings inside a Media Composer so that you can easily switch back and forth between them depending on what it is that you're doing in your editing process. Okay, let's keep our introduction short, let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And of course, I want to remind you that as of this recording, the version of Media Composer that we are using is version 8.4.4 of Media Composer. Now, that's something else that I want to point out that's exceptionally important. The team at Avid is always releasing point updates even for older versions of Media Composer. So let's say, for example, you're on 8.2 of Media Composer. Believe it or not, they're actually up to 8.2.5 of Media Composer version 8.2. So that's something that's always important to keep in mind. You're always going to want to go back and check your master Avid account for any new point updates to Media Composer to make sure that you're getting the most recent bug fixes and enhancements to keep your editing process as smooth as possible. Okay, so let's start out with some basic editing techniques. Now, the most common editing technique, I'm just gonna double click on my bin here. I've already imported some clips here. Now, most of the clips that I've brought in don't have audio, but I made sure that I did bring one clip in that of course does have audio. Now, the easiest way to tell if your clip has both audio and video with it is one of two ways. You can actually have that set as a bin view inside of your bin. Again, you can head up to your choose columns, and I believe you can come all the way down to the bottom here two tracks there we go tracks is actually already selected so i should be able to just scroll across there we go you can see that i have v1 a1 and a2 or just v1 for all these clips but the easier way to tell if you don't want to be scrolling back and forth inside your bin of course is right down here in the timeline you'll see right now i can see that i have a or video audio one and audio two and if i select any of the other clips i'll only have video only Okay. Now the easiest way to create a new sequence, one of two ways is that you can right click on the sequence window and simply say new sequence, or just choose the range of the clip that you want to drop in. And in this case, I'm just going to come down, mark an in point with I on the keyboard, mark an out point with O on the keyboard, or of course you can simply use the composer shortcuts if you like. Now my suggestion for editors, especially if you're starting out, is try to stay away from clicking on commands in the composer window. And even down here, over top of your timeline. The easiest way to get working quickly and as fast as you possibly can inside a Media Composer is to get used to those shortcuts. They really are going to enhance your workflow you know, the more that you get accustomed to using them. So for me, I like to stick with the keyboard. Now, I'm going to do an overwrite edit to create a new sequence. Now, to do an overwrite edit, now if you're not familiar with what an overwrite edit is, this edit is if let's say you had three clips in your timeline and you wanted to take this clip and put it down right over top of the clips that happen to be there that is an overwrite edit you're going to take that and just plop it down right on top an insert edit on the other hand is an edit where it's going to take this clip it's going to wherever you have your in point marked or the time bar and it's going to push all the clips down the timeline it's not a destructive command it's going to push everything down the timeline to accommodate this new clip that you have going in now in this case i don't have anything in the timeline so it really doesn't matter whether i use an overwrite or insert i'll just use overwrite the shortcut on the keyboard is of course b for both mac and windows so i'm just simply going to hit b on the keyboard to drop that in and let's just drop a couple other clips in here Okay, I'll just come down here again. I'll just hit B and I'll just do one more here. Okay, and I'll come down here and we'll just hit B again. There we go. So there's three clips in my timeline. So again, an overwrite edit would be if I selected this clip, for example, and I'm just going to mark an in and out point here. And let's say I wanted to take this clip and just drop it in right over top of the clips that are here. No problem. B on the keyboard will do that. Now you'll see if I wanted it to happen right over this edit here. I could just do this and there we go. Now, of course, again, on the flip side of that, if we want to take this clip, 
We want to insert it right at the edit point here and push everything down the timeline, no problem. We're simply going to use V on the keyboard or insert to drop this clip in. Now, the reason it didn't insert right here where I was at the edit was because I have the endpoint point marked back here. If I adjust the endpoint, point, of course, and hit V, there we go, okay? Now, the other way to drop clips into your timeline, again, is very simple. You can simply drag and drop. Now, by default, you'll see that if I don't have any of my segment tools selected here, I can simply take the clip, drag it right down here, and you'll see that I get the insert segment tool. You'll see that I can choose where I want this clip to be dropped in in my timeline, or what I can do is hold Command to snap to any of the edit points, okay? And once I'm where I want this clip to be dropped in, and of course, this is going to be an insert uh, edit, we're going to drop this in and push everything down, I can simply let go and you can see that that edit has been made. Now I'm just going to undo what I just did there because we could do the exact same thing if I select the overwrite segment tool and again I'm just going to grab this, drag it down here. You'll see there we go, we can of course come right here, drop this down and it's going to do an overwrite command and plop that clip right down over top of the clips that are already there. And of course, I should point out that whether you're working with video and audio or just video or just audio, the technique works the same. So for example, if I want to bring in all the video and audio clips, it's a simple drag and drop. And you'll see now that I have access to video and those two audio tracks. I'm just going to take this and just drop it. Um, let's do this as an insert, I think, here. There we go. We'll just drop that in just like such. Now, one thing that I want to point out that's a little bit different in Media Composer than it would be in a program like Premiere or even Final Cut Pro 7 is that when you drop audio into your timeline, inside of Premiere and inside of Final Cut Pro 7, that audio is actually attached to that clip. The only way to get access to it separate of the actual video is to unlink it before you move it. Not the same inside of Media Composer. What I can do is just simply grab any one of the segment tools and just start dragging, and these clips are completely independent of each other. I can do whatever I want to them just like that. Okay? Now, of course, what's going to happen at this point is let's just say hypothetically that I wanted to drag in, we'll just say I'm going to drag in another part of this clip here. Okay? Just like this. And I'm just going to drag in video and audio one, and I'm going to drag it in right here, and I'm going to do an insert so that we're going to push everything down. What's going to happen is that when I bring this clip in, of course I hold command again to drop it in right here, we're going to drop it in, but of course it's going to drop it in on video one and audio one. Those tracks are going to be pushed down, but of course audio two is not going to be adjusted at all. Well, what we have the ability to do is to come in and we can of course sync these tracks together just like such. You'll see I turned the sync on for all the tracks. If I wanted to turn the sync off, I could simply select that again, or I can select the sync for specific tracks you know, if I only wanted to impact certain tracks. I'm just going to do it for everything now, and you'll see that if I make this edit again now, everything will be pushed down the timeline together. Very, very cool. Okay, so that's just some basic, basic editing techniques inside a Media Composer. You'll see, again, like I said, if I wanted to get in and just drop in some audio, I only wanted it to be an overwrite, we can take any part of this clip here just like such, and just drag it and drop it, and really put it wherever we want it to go. But let's talk about what's going to happen now once we get into our timeline. Because as great as our timeline is right now, it's very limiting in what we can see and what we have the ability to get in and work with inside of obviously our Media Composer timeline. So I want to talk about having timeline settings or timeline views set up. And it's something that's very easy to do, but not a lot of people utilize it. So how do we go about using the timeline settings or timeline views? Okay, now I'm going to give you the perfect example, or at least example that I think is a perfect example. One view that I always like to have, there's actually two views, two audio views that I always like to work with. I like to have an expanded track view for working just to be able to see my audio waveforms. And then, if necessary, I like to have the ability to get in and add audio keyframes inside of my Media Composer timeline as well, but I also like to keep this default timeline, which is what I call my quote-unquote normal timeline, just that I have the ability to switch back and forth very quickly and very easily depending on what it is that I need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my normal timeline view. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come right down here to the bottom where it says Untitled. I'm simply going to click on Untitled and I'm going to say Save As and I'm just going to call this Normal. Now, much like with the bin views, with our timeline views, we can find them inside of our main project window in the Settings tab and it's located all the way down here at the bottom. There's my timeline and there is my timeline view right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an expanded view 
for my first audio view, which is simply going to be my waveform view. Now, much like in our bin thumbnail view, I'm just gonna to come to thumbnail view here for a second. If I wanted to expand the size of these thumbnails, I'm simply gonna use Command and L to increase the size of them. Of course, I can then come in and we can just fit this to the window here. Let's say fill window, there we go, very nice. And the technique works exactly the same inside of your Media Composer timeline. With the tracks selected that you want to adjust the size of, what you can do is simply press Command and L on the Mac, Control and L on Windows. Now what I probably should have done here was I don't necessarily want to expand the timeline track. So I'm actually, what I'm going to do just to make my life easy, I'm just going to switch back to normal view. I'm just going to turn off my timeline tracks here. And let's just expand the audio channels. Now something else that I should mention, and this is a big one, I'm just going to switch back to normal again here. If you normally work with eight tracks of audio, okay, now that's sort of a, a workflow that I normally work with. I like to work with eight tracks of audio, very common workflow. Maybe you work with 12, 16, doesn't matter. What I normally suggest doing is when you're creating this timeline view, actually add that amount of tracks in here. Just so that this way when you create the view, those, t those tracks here will have that view set for it. So now let's take this and let's just expand it out here. I'm just gonna expand it pretty far. Let's say to about there, because we're gonna make our second view a variation on the first one, okay? So I've expanded this all the way out, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on my audio waveforms, just like such. Now, these waveforms obviously are, you know, fairly self-explanatory. The audio is pretty loud, but that's okay, because inevitably, depending on what the voiceover is or the, you know, music track is, the waveforms are gonna vary. But just the fact that I have them on right now means that I can come back here, I can simply come to my timeline view, we're gonna call this save as, I'm just gonna call this waveforms, okay? Now I should also point out that if you don't know where to find the command to turn on your audio waveforms, that's very simple. We're gonna navigate right down here to the fast menu at the bottom of the timeline window. I'm going to come up to my audio data and you'll see that the audio waveform is located right here, okay? Now what we also have the ability to do inside of Media Composer is that I can expand out my track control panel and I can also turn things like the waveform on and off right from here if necessary, but right here I'm just gonna turn the waveform off. You'll see now that I can turn the waveform on on a per channel basis. Now of course I've got audio there, nothing on track three. Or if I wanted to just do things as a general, you know, sort of overview for the entire sequence, this is where we can turn it on right here, okay? Now you'll see, of course, this is called waveforms and that's fine, so there's our view. What I'm gonna do here now is I'm just going to delete some of these tracks. Now I should also point out here, this is also cool, and this is one thing I like to do all the time inside of Media Composer, is that if you hold shift, you can swipe down tracks to add and disable tracks very quickly and very easily. Now I'm just gonna delete uh, five, six, seven, and eight here. Okay, we're just gonna say okay. And actually, before I do that, let me just undo that because I wanna switch back to my waveforms view because there is one more view that I do want to make. Now, I'm gonna turn off my audio waveforms, but I'm gonna turn something else on down here. I'm gonna come back to the fast menu. I'm gonna come up to my audio data and I'm gonna turn on the volume. Now you'll see as soon as I turn the volume on, I can actually see zero plus six plus 12 minus seven minus 15 minus 45. Now most people think, well, why would you have this on? Okay, now I'm gonna again, we're gonna save this. I'm gonna call this audio mixing, okay? Some people, and I'm not one that's big into audio mixing using the keyframe method, but some people do like to do audio mixing using the keyframe method. I'm just gonna navigate over to this clip here, okay? I'm now actually gonna delete these clips because once I've created the view, I don't need to have all the clips in there anymore, so I'm just gonna delete that. And maybe, you know what, maybe I'll just bring in a music track here. I'm just gonna link to a music track. So let me just come up here to music. There we go. I'm just gonna come to, sure, we'll just select the, the streets from Rampant Design Tools. I'll just select Daily Grind. Doesn't really matter which one for the purposes of what we're doing, okay? Uh, we'll just say this is 2398. I'll say okay to all. Let's just switch back to list view here. There we go, okay? I'm just gonna take this. We're just gonna put it in here. Now, it doesn't matter what the actual audio track is for the purpose of what we're doing. Because what I wanna show you here now is that if I use the command to add a keyframe, which is the quotes key, which is right beside the return key on your keyboard, you'll see that I can actually add in keyframes and I can actually do a mix right here on my timeline. Now, of course, I could select multiple keyframes and do that together just like such. And this is how you can get in and do some audio mixing in your timeline if this is the preferred method to work with.
And you'll see, so basically what we'll have is we'll have the lead up, the audio will dip down, come across, and then come back up. Now, of course, if you for some reason wanted to have, you know, your audio waveform included in with the volume controls to do audio mixing, you could create a setting that looks like that as well. Okay, a couple more techniques I want to show you inside of your timeline view. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to switch back to my normal view here. Okay, switch back to normal. There we go. And one technique that I use all the time is I'm constantly zooming in and zooming out of areas on my timeline. Now, inside of Final Cut Pro, and this might be the same inside of Premiere as well, you have the ability to just hit Command and Plus to zoom in on your timeline. It's not the same inside of Media Composer. If I hit Command and Plus, believe it or not, the timeline settings come up, which is not what I want to do. But I like to use a little bit of a different technique to do my zooming in, okay? And what I like to do is to do the lasso method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command and M on the Mac, Control and M on Windows, M for Michael. And it's going to bring up this little range selector that lets me select a specific range of a clip, and Media Composer will zoom in on it. I always use this in conjunction with another command. And the, the command that I use it with is command and forward slash. Now that's control and forward slash for my Windows friends out there. Now I'm pretty sure it's forward slash. I always get them confused. It's the slash key right beside the shift key on the right side of the keyboard. I believe that's forward slash. And what that command is, is to zoom back and show the entire sequence. So this is a great way by hitting command and M to zoom in and control and forward slash to zoom out that you can easily get in and very quickly navigate through the timeline, jumping in and jumping out as necessary. Okay, now the next thing that I want to show you is you have the ability, you know, what I'm going to do here is I think I'm just going to AMA link to another clip here. Let me, um, no, you know what, let's do this. I'm going to duplicate this sequence. We're just going to call this sequence whatever, okay? And we're going to assume for argument's sake that this is just a sequence that I have that I need to edit parts of this sequence in to the current sequence that I'm working on. Now, when you're just dealing with single clips and you're dragging them into your preview window, they're very easy to navigate through. It's really only a clip. You don't have to worry about, you know, uh, command clicking places so you snap to edit points and things like that. But what if you needed to drop a segment of a sequence in to another sequence, okay? Well, it works fairly similar. We could take this sequence and drag it and drop it into the preview window, and here's the exact sequence that we have that's in our timeline right now. The only problem is that we're gonna assume that this you know, timeline is an hour long, and I need to get really specific and actually see all of the different edits in this particular timeline. Well, what we have the ability to do right down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the timeline is we can toggle the source and record in timeline. What does that mean? Well, right now we're looking at the source window. This timeline represents what we're seeing up here in our timeline window. What I want to do is see what's in the source window. So by toggling this button right here, I can see what is up in the source window. You'll see the time bar has changed to be green. Why? Because our toggle source recording timeline is toggled as being green. And now I'm seeing, you'll see if I drag through, what is being seen up here in the preview window. So now I can specifically select the exact range that I want to edit into my timeline. I can switch back, come down to the end, hit B on the keyboard, and there we go. Now, of course, I probably should have selected all the tracks here. There we go. And you could see how simple that technique is to work with. Okay, so last tip for this lesson, and again, right down at the bottom of the timeline, you have the ability to get in and search for elements in your timeline simply by coming in and punching anything that you might want to search for right here in the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch in 000956 because one of my clips is from 00956 Video Tracks HD. I'm simply going to say enter and the time bar is going to jump to the beginning of that clip. So for example, if I want to jump down to clip 950, which is right here, I'm just going to change that value to 950 hit enter and the timeline is going to jump down to that clip as well. So this again is a very quick and very simple way to get in and find clips in your timeline literally at the snap of a finger. So if you got one of those, you know, picky producers or directors that sit beside you and they just want you to get things done right away, you can utilize these techniques to help speed up your workflow and just make the overall, you know, feel of your edit a lot smoother and a lot easier. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, 
you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.